All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Really important show topic here today. We're doing a show specifically on a nutrient taken from nature that is being used intravenously or as an injection by over 30% of cancer-based clinics in Europe. And why isn't it being used as much in the United States? I'm going to share with you all of the different research behind it, let you make the decision for yourself. But what if there was a drug that was from nature, so all natural, and it was able to do this? And I want to share a few studies with you. A 2016 meta-analysis of mistletoe therapy in advanced cancer patients published in Cancer Medicine found a statistically significant increase in overall survival for patients receiving mistletoe alongside conventional treatment. A second study, a study done in BMC Complementary Medicine and Therapies in 2020 reported that mistletoe therapy improved tumor regression rates in advanced pancreatic cancer patients. That means shrinking of tumors. Another study in BMC Cancer in 2018 showed that mistletoe treatment reduced neuropathy and chemotherapy-induced cognitive impairment, also called chemo brain. Another study done in 2016 in PLOS, P-L-O-S-1, demonstrated that mistletoe extract caused apoptosis in pancreatic cancer cells by upregulating the caspase pathway, a key regulator of cell death. Literally, mistletoe helped to induce cell death of cancer cells. Another study in 2020 showed that mistletoe lectins suppressed tumor growth in breast and colon cancer cells by disrupting cancer cell metabolism. You know how all the people out there who like to use the word plant-based toxins, plant toxins? Yeah, these plant toxins also help to kill cancer cells. Just kind of putting that out there for thought. All right, in 2013, over a decade ago, a systematic review, this was done over a decade ago, a systematic review in evidence-based complementary and alternative medicine found that mistletoe therapy enhanced immune function in cancer patients, leading to improvement in quality of life. And that included all patients. Pretty impressive. So this is why cancer-based clinics using both allopathic and, uh, and complementary medicine or natural medicine has been used in over 30% of cancer patients, especially in Germany, but also all over Europe. But I will tell you, there are lots of clinics now in the United States offering mistletoe-based therapy. And I'm going to link up how to find them at stephencabral.com slash 3315. So head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3315. Please keep in mind, I receive no kickbacks, credit, affiliate payments, anything like that at all. So I just want you to know that. I'm just, I'm trying to share other clinics doing great work that are offering mistletoe-based therapy. And I will also say before I go into it specifically what it is, is that I don't think that mistletoe is the end-all be-all and should be used only by itself for cancer-based treatment. So I just want to say that not to give you my disclaimer. We're not providing any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis on the show. All right. But It is an amazing, an amazing herb that is literally a, what's called a semi-parasitic plant that has been used for centuries for what? Well, for boosting the overall immune system. The actual name of mistletoe is Viscum album. So you might see it written as that as well. And as I said before, although it's not a replacement for other natural and or conventional medicine-based treatment plans, it's used as an adjunct. So it's used as actually to support, it could be chemotherapy, it could be radiation, it could be other natural health-based protocols and programs like they use at Hope for Cancer to help the body's immune system respond. What does that mean? Well, it means that if your body's immune system was actually at 100%, it would be able to find those cancer cells, mark them, tag them, and then destroy them. That's how our immune system works. So whenever someone gets cancer, you automatically have to assume something's off with this person's immune system because the cancer cells have been evading detection from the immunoglobulins, from the white blood cells, from the T cells, from the natural killer cells in the body. Because if it was functioned properly, they wouldn't be able to hide and stay undetected. That's the interesting thing. But unfortunately, some toxins and even things like mold and mycotoxins from our environment actually begin to weaken the immune response. Okay, let me give you three main reasons why you might want to look into it or share it with a friend. The first is this. 
Mistletoe helps to modulate the immune system. So this can enhance those natural killer cells and T cells that I was just speaking about. And the reason why you want to boost those is because those are what's going to go after and eradicate the cancer-based cells. Number two, it induces apoptosis. So apoptosis means that it can cause programmed cell death in those cancer cells. Oh, this cell became cancerous? your body automatically, it would go through a process naturally within that cell to induce apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. It didn't happen in that cancer cell. That cancer cell is like a, a runaway senescent cell that actually becomes malignant. All right, the third one is this, that it massively improves quality of life, whether you're using natural or conventional treatments such as radiation or chemotherapy. Massively improves overall inflammation and side effects. So I've got a study in here. Unlike chemotherapy, which directly attacks cancer cells, mistletoe supports the body's own ability to fight cancer and recover from these more harsh treatments. There is a study that literally showed that 100% of all the people taking mistletoe improved overall quality of life. So just like if you are going through conventional treatment protocols, it can be pretty tough going through chemotherapy and radiation. And using mistletoe can at least improve your overall quality of life, if not helping to potentiate those treatments and provide the, your own immune system functioning better, balancing better levels of inflammation and inducing cellular apoptosis in those cancer cells. All right, just a couple more things I wanted to show you. Been used for decades overseas in Europe, not yet FDA approved, but it's actually in clinical trials right now. So just to let you know, conventional medicine knows very well about mistletoe. John Hopkins University is currently conducting clinical trials on mistletoe for cancer. So now, whether they'll find anything or not, again, like, I don't know, are, are, there, are there powers that be that will not always let these things push through? Maybe. Why? Because mistletoe doesn't cost tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars for treatments. It costs hundreds of dollars, right? So it's very different, right? Very different. All right. A couple more that I wanted to share with you is this. 2014 study in the Journal of Cancer Research and Clinical Oncology found that patients with stage four lung cancer who received mistletoe therapy had significantly better symptom control and mood stability compared to those um, using conventional medicine. Couple more studies. I don't want to bore you with the studies, but I think that this is important. Mistletoe extracts inhibits the proliferation of liver-based cancer. That was in scientific reports and that was published April uh, 23rd, 2019. So as I said, mistletoe can and probably should be, if possible, added to most people's cancer-based protocols. You want to find a good practitioner that has used this before. It should be used not orally, but actually for best results given as an injection or intravenously. You can find it all over Europe in cancer-based institutes and also now in the United States as well. I'm going to keep bringing you the best of cancer-based care. I'll bring you the best off-label drugs. I'll bring you the best natural health, nutrition, fasting, fasting mimicking diet, all of the things. I will bring you everything because here's the thing. I've said it before, but unlike heart disease, unlike high blood pressure, unlike type 2 diabetes, where you can have like years to reverse those and kind of take your time with cancer, time is not on your side. You need to act swiftly and you need to use everything at your disposal to what? To stay alive, fight another day, and then do all the healthy things once you recover so that the cancer never comes back. All of my details on cancer are at stephencabral.com slash cancer. It's completely free and it's updated quarterly with all of the new research that I'm finding, that I'm making sure that it's valid, that it works, and obviously you can share it with anyone you feel it could serve. All right, all of today's show notes at stephencabal.com slash 3315. And of course, for all things natural health and cancer, but really all things integrative cancer, head on over to stephencabal.com slash cancer. Be well, let's keep looking out for each other. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.